Thank you. That's the thing. This meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to the town council YouTube. James, that decision making should be transparent and public and in the public for a minute, which will involve more our community and democracy. By being in this council chamber, you are consenting to be recorded uh, and for your image to be added to YouTube. The images and sound may be used for training purposes. Any views expressed by the speaker's own do not necessarily reflect the view of the Budget Town Council. Please uh, view the guidance on recording and public meetings policy in further information. Thank you. All right, meeting with recreation and amenities. We've had a long and uh, uh, quite interesting before council meeting. Uh, now let's move on to the agenda. All the other things before, please, Chief. Yes. Right. Uh, disposal, pecuniary interests, and dispensation. Are there any? Nope. Nope. Uh, other interests. Are there any? Nope. Okay, thank you. Uh, for me to approve and sign the minutes of the recreation amenities meeting held on the 12th of September 2023. May I do so, please? Yeah. What's on the like to close and say? Opposed by Councillor Smith, seconded by Councillor Proud. Thank you. You very much. To receive the notes from the Transport Working Group meeting held on the 13th of September. Proposal, please. Mr. Lawton. Second in. Seconded, Councillor Dagan Yates, the Deputy Mayor. Uh, all those in favour? Here. To receive item 32, an update on memorial testing. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, it, it's just those who were present in the previous council, I'll just bring you to this where we are. I have some copies of the memorial testing report available that you can have that electronically in paper form. We had um, a review completed. Uh, probably 18 months ago now, which identified the areas that we should focus our attention um, when we carry out the latest wave of memorial testing. And the area that was identified at most at risk was the churchyard, obviously the different regulations in place for memorials were installed at that point. Um, we have been working with the diocese at Litchfield Department of Faculty so that we can test those memorials. It has taken quite a number of months to get to this point. We believe now that there is nothing preventing us from completing the memorial testing. So we have done the consultation with, us. Um, with the church, if all the relevant notices have been displayed, feedback's been reported. Um, so what I would like to suggest to you is that we revisit the quotations that we had from the memorial testing with priority being these side and um, that we is actually move forward with that knowing that the commission is pending. If we have two years in which to test all of those movements across our sites, across the church side, outside uh, a town of leisure, I suppose, but um, we've got two years in which to complete uh, the testing on the church side, um, after which we'd have to apply for another faculty to go through the process again. So I'd like to get started. I've got two people who have indicated they wish to speak. Councillor Yates, you first. Yeah, is, is there any evidence that the actual process of testing causes a future a future problem? I mean, if you you know, it's like testing a plank by walking across and jumping up and down a bit. It might not go, but you might have structurally uh, 
uh, weaken it a little bit or cause cause a bit of stress to happen in it, you know, because I've seen some of these people who test and push and whatever, and I think you can make something stable, a little unstable by going through the process. For an agenda. That's all. Oh, oh. Is that? Is that... I, I, no, I was. I was. I thought he wanted to speak, and I was. Well, uh, uh, but just in summary, is there any evidence that the process of testing actually causes? No, if there's, as far as I'm aware, if there is an issue already, then it doesn't make something worse. And um, quite a number of the, head, of the memorials that are in the churchyard um, are starting to wobble. We've had to lay some flat recently, and that's not ideal. So the process we've, we've gone through with regards to that is to try and get hold of the grave manager, and it's the church that keeps the records there. They've only managed to one of the grave managers that's that's always been that to it. Which means sign there, you know, to come across to me the agents. Yeah. But no, it, it's if it, if it's if something wobbles under the down and low amount of stress, then it's not good. Thank you. Um, Mr. Brown. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to get your attention for counsel. Yeah. Is he? I thought he wanted to speak. Right. Yeah, I know. I've, 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 I would, I would propose that we ask the Chief of Office to, to action this at uh, the utmost haste because we have got a time limit on it and there is a lot to do, having been around with yourself and um, Council Parks to, with the Chief Officer, there's some very urgent, I think, headstones that need um, addressing quite quickly. So I, I, would, I would propose that we... I'll that. second that, Chair. You're going to second it. Thank you, Councillor Jones. Uh, all those in favour? Thank you. Right, we move on. To receive an update on the Bateman Walk at the burial grounds. Officer. I've got a little presentation for you. Boy, this is going to have to be <laughs> Probably will. Okay, Bateman Walk. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is the path that links the two sites between um, the older area of the burial ground and the modern part of the burial ground. It's the original path way from the graves to St Lawrence's Church, where the Bateman family uh, would come from the house to the Sunday services. Mm. Uh, for quite a number of years, it was uh, essentially derelict. So the Grange Gardens uh, cuts off at one end and it was very overgrown. Lots of rhododendrons needed to be removed. Um, and the Rotary Club took on that work. It is town council land, and it, it was before I started here, but I understand that they had approached and were given permission to do that piece of work. Mm -hmm. um, and so now, having uh, a number of years ago, a, a, ago given us back the kind of hard landscaping work, yes. and work they now undertake some of the more um, soft landscaping, I suppose is the, is the right word, and some... Um, so, for those of you who are not familiar, this is the map there um, between the two sites. I've sent you this presentation on email today if you want to study it in greater detail. Uh, this is a beautiful picture that was taken for us for our calendar a few years ago. So, this is the, the very large tree at one end of the walk, which has a uh, rotary bench around it and the names of Rotarians who passed away on that. Um, this is what it currently looks like. Um, <laughs> um, lots of badger activity there. Um, and mm. For those of you who are not familiar with legislation in regards to the protection of badgers, um, this is um, these are our requirements rather. So we can't um, take injure or kill a badger, treat the badger cruelly, interfere with the badger set, possess or control a live badger. Or mark or ring a badger, so uh, all down one side of Bateman Walk um, are a lot of badgers. So things that we would need to consider undertaking in the next 12 months, we need to put some more gravel in patches 
um, there are areas that where it's just wearing a bit thin that needs some additional DLC. This area here, the Rotary Club would like to plant, uh, they'd like to reintroduce the rhododendrons and hydrangeas. Um, there isn't a lot of interest. Um, a lot of things were taken out, I suppose that's the best way to describe it. So it would be quite a nice idea to reintroduce something that did exist during the time of Bateman. Obviously, there'd have to be rhododendrons that are um, suitably engineered. So that disease they're resistant. Disease resistant, which was an issue there before. Um, for those who weren't here with the previous council, um, these are the blue benches that were installed by the Rotary. They are oh. not to everyone's liking, and we have had some discussions with them about how to change the colour. <laughs> I'd like to take your view on that. The proposal at the moment um, would be that they would do some planting around there, which might help to soften the blue. Um, I gather that they weren't all aware that they were going to be quite that bright blue. And then there was some concern about uh, changing the colour because they'd been powder coated with blue. That is something that we need to consider again. The Rotary Club would like to plant 4,000 crocus bulbs in this area here, which I think is quite a nice idea. Mm. Um, so that's the last us if they can do that. Um, there is a substantial amount of, I've said, tree debris on the site. We've lost a lot of trees along the Bateman Walk over the past few years um, with various storms. And um, in this case, this, this tree's fallen down just because it's absolutely covered in ivy. That's destroyed the tree underneath. Um, should some of this be removed, a lot of it's been left on site as kind of natural habitats, but there is now an awful lot of it. Um, as far as the maintenance goes, so we have an annual tree survey which is completed by NNJ. Um, it's not always a <clears throat> Full survey. We have walkovers, so what they call walkover surveys mm. in between, which highlight any uh, imminent risks in managing the site. Um, and the maintenance of that area is included within the contract that we have with RGS. Um, and that's the detail that's there. As I say, it's a bit small to read there, but you have got this report sent to you by uh, email. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Um... It was a very interesting walk around with um, Pass Light and Parks and Council Garvey. Um, and we did visit the area. And uh, I think it would benefit from some introduction of rhododendrons, um, but the disease resistant variety, because the District Council was given a vast amount of money by DEFRA uh, to remove the old rhododendrons from the country park which they did uh, quite successfully. Um, but there hasn't been any replanting there of any new varieties. Um, the badger set, uh, we have to keep mentioning to people that you can't interfere with the badger set because that's against the law. Um, and uh, make sure that people who do jobs on our behalf don't do that. Uh, very imperative uh, because um, the penalties are very severe. I've got Councillor Yates and then Councillor Proudlodge and Councillor Jones. Yes, I think in all these areas now, we, we need to be considering uh, the, the wider plan for nature, which has just been adopted over at Staffordshire Morgans and effectively fits in with the local nature recovery strategy of Staffordshire County Council, which means we've really got to consider these areas as prime candidates for increasing native biodiversity. And then within that context, planting a monoculture of 4,000 crocus bulbs as much as they are nice isn't really compatible and planting a, what is a non-native species like a rhododendron isn't strictly compatible. So what I would propose and understanding that there's got to be a uh, aesthetic community value is perhaps we should uh, take advice and staff to our life trust to our due to come and visit and give us advice on three uh, green space areas which we are uh, looking as, as the first projects for biodiversity in that game. And if we can fit in with both the plan for nature and the local nature recovery strategy, then that would actually attract funding uh, from biodiversity in that game credits from uh, developer contributions. 
which would allow us to actually do some amenity improvements at the same time. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Proudlove. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, I actually think this is a, a really, really charming space and amenity. Um, and I really think we could make something of it. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if there's actually a project here for the town. I know we loaded up with probably projects, but uh, you know, um, do we develop a plan and a strategy to and and actually sell this as a, a, a really good addition to we call ourselves the Garden Town of Staffordshire? Um, I think it could be it could be wonderful. Thank you, Councillor Proudle of Councillor Jones. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair. I've just I've got a couple of points, but I'm just interested to know what the current what the current state of play is with the blue benches, because I understood my last involvement with it was that the road should pretty much been told to really change the colour or take them away or do something with them. But what I, I don't want it to be forgotten. I mean, just so they're there, let's cover them up. And, they're abhorrent. They're awful. It looks like something from the flipping seaside. It really <laughs> does. It's dreadful. And I think you know, we should be digging our heels in and insisting that they do something about it. Or if they are not do something about it, we should do something about it because they look awful. That's the first point. Crocuses, I like crocuses, Councillor Gates, can I just say? And it is a monoculture, I agree, but it's very well used. Bees and insects are lovely. They look lovely. So I wouldn't have any issues with the crocuses, but I agree with your, your wider point about biodiversity and native species. I was a bit disappointed, to be honest, though, when all the all the rhododendrons were taken out of the country park because all that's replaced it is bracken. And it looks an absolute flipping mess, and it looks look gorgeous when the rods are in there. Um, yeah, thanks for all I've got Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lawton. Um, following Councillor Jones's remarks there, if you can do <clears throat> follow Councillor Yates. I'd like to suggest that whatever we do, whether we do it with the the flora and fauna, or whether we do it with the benches, that aesthetic attractiveness should be a major factor in everything we do. Thank you, Councillor Lawton. Uh, Councillor Jones, you wish to come back? Well, just one, <clears throat> I know we're late. I don't want to make a big deal of this, but who owns the past? From the church to our burial, our, our new bit of burial ground. When you come out the south door of the church down the long cobbled path, right? we do. We do. So, where that, there's an entrance there, and as far as I know, that's the only entrance to the path that leads to our burial ground. Yeah, am I correct? Uh, apart from on the Woodhouse side. From the Woodhouse side, you put from the church, when people are going from the church to an internment. That's the way they go. They come out that south door, you down the long path, you bear left, there's a there's a sort of arch big gate and, and there's a step about that big. You've got a wheelchair, it's almost impossible to negotiate that step. We should do something about it if it's ours. Thank you. Councillor Garvey, final speaker. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. I'm picking up on <clears throat> Councillor Yates's comments about the type of planting. Um I'm with him 100% on the uh, on the crocuses. I think what we should be looking for there is a, a a native woodland planting. Native bluebells would be good. Something if they want something that, that's pretty, that's attractive for the birds and for the the um, trees, etc. But the rhododendron side that was originally part, I think, of the Grange Gardens landscaping. So we should be looking at the historic plans for that landscaping and see what they are to actually try and recover the original planting scheme rather than using that for a, um, a natural species for natural species sake. I think it's probably more beneficial in terms of the garden town of Staffordshire to actually pick, be picking up on the, what is perhaps one of the National Trust's best gardens. Yes, it is. Um, to actually link ourselves into that. But yes. the balance being that we put the um, woodland planting to be um, native species and there are a, a vast range of, of native woodland planting, whether it be bluebells or I think even cyclamen are, are native. There are native cyclamen varieties, uh, fritillaries, all sorts of um, suitable uh, woodland planting that we could actually make that a very attractive area. I, I, I'll just make a comment. Um, I agree with the, the uh, native bluebells, particularly, because uh, I know that they exist 
Uh, you mentioned um, a ha ha type um, walk around the the perimeter, yeah. and if you go further up, um, and it's it's a, a field that uh, I can see from my house. There's an, another wall there that's quite tall, and the whole of that bank side is covered in natural wild bluebells. And and they are also actually on a bank side as you come up past my house, uh, up Woodhouse Lane. So they are prevalent up and down there, uh, along with common orchid as well. So uh, we're looking for, um, uh, shall we say, areas where you can plant the the stuff that's already there, but in other places. Thank if, you. If if you were at a, attended the one of the um, the old hall events if it, earlier in the year when the bluebells were out at the old hall. I mean, they are absolutely beautiful. And that's yes, they are, they are. I've attended that. And it's all part of, it used to be part of the same estate, the same ownership. It's from Bateman's time. And um, they try and, uh, the, the, uh, the National Trust do and try and, they don't talk about Heath's time at Biddle Grange. They talk about Bateman's time and Bateman's planting. And that's the paramount thing that get, attracts all the visitors in. So, Councillor Proudle, if you wish to come back briefly? Yeah, just very briefly. I mean, if we talk about looking at um, historic plans, I've got a pretty good book at home uh, on the Grange, so happy to share that. And share that with the Chief Officer. Chief Officer, you wish to comment? No, not at all. <laughs> So you want me to turn down the rotary's request for planting crocuses? What do you want to do on that committee? Because uh, Councillor Jones, I'm quite happy with crocuses. By all these mixed primroses in it and bluebell, and bluebells are quite late. Bluebells don't come in till sort of mid late May. May, May time they do. Yeah. Let's have snowdrops as well, maybe I'll go primroses, whatever. But turn them down. I mean, crocuses are fine. I, yeah. Uh, I think I think there's general consensus that we don't turn this down. Uh, we just try and extrapolate on it. Would you go with that? Yeah, biodiversity. A little bit, bit of biodiversity, Professor. Well, we're not going to have to bake and plant bluebells up the bank side at Woodhouse. So I've said that's okay. I don't yeah. think there's a problem with that. They want to do no. that Woodhouse children, um, so there'll be bluebells there. I'll bring you in later. Chief oh. officer, continue, please. No, no, I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm led by you on this. I provide an update and then you steer me where you want me to go. Right. So, uh, uh, will you accept them in uh, Act 2, Chair? Accept and add two. <laughs> right. That's a proposer. Do I have a seconder for that? <laughs> you can't just, just, just like to say, Chair, if you don't mind, is that I think, you know, picking up on what Councillor Garvey said, I think, you know, we've if we can provide flowers throughout the whole uh, late winter, spring, summer season and, and finish off by having a suitable range, which is always in flower and therefore always providing food source for bees and things like that. You know, that's one of the things which is going to be coming up on the on the climate change working group uh, later in the week. Um, I think that would be beneficial. I mean, one thing about Himalayan balsam, I'm not advocating we plant Himalayan balsam, it's illegal, but where it grows, it actually does provide very late nectar in the season. And then, you know, and in some places, it's actually a benefit if it's in the wrong places. It Thank you very much. Now, uh, I've got a proposer, I need a seconder, uh, Councillor Lawton. All those in favour, we're, we're talking about the crocuses plus a lot more. Okay. Are you all happy with that? Are those in favour, please? Any against? No. I just say, I think, you know, uh, there's a passing ground if you drive to Holmes Chapel through Jelf to Goose Street. And it, it starts with the white of the snowdrops, and then the crocuses, and then the English daffodils, and then the bluebells. That's the type of thing we're aiming for. So let's have the crocuses. And yes. Okay. Lovely. Chief Officer, are you happy with that? Always. Thank you. All right, thank you. <laughs> Consider football priorities, including the feedback from the Biddle for Ramblers. Chief Officer. Uh, two things on this. I um, 
informed the ramblers too late of our meeting so that I think we should invite them to a future meeting to uh, talk about their priorities for Biddle because they have a number of ideas. But I would like um, to do some work on one of the suggestions that came from Eddie, one of the ramblers. So he's saying that the Canal and River Trust are developing the Trent Valley Way, which is a new footpath. Um, and it's mostly... Um, I guess in the kind of south of the county, not in Biddulph. And he thinks that given that the Trent starts on Biddulph Moor, we should be part of these discussions about the Trent Valley Way. Um, but he's saying that some bits of the footpath that would link him to the... I need to do some research on it if you think that's a mm, good idea. Yes, I think. But some bits of the um, footpath where we would take people from the head of the Trent down towards the rest of the, the kind of Trent Valley Way we would need some work. Um, and that being the case, I think we need to get our boots on and go and have a look. Are you <laughs> happy with that? Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a suggestion from our Chief Officer. I think a very good idea indeed. Uh, are you happy that the Chief Officer should proceed accordingly? Yes, yes. So move, a seconder, Councillor Garvey. Councillor Jones has proposed it. All those in favour? Right. Thank you very much. We have a clear steer. Jobs for the linksman, please. Standing agenda item. Councillor Smith. Um, I have. I was asked by um, Councillor Andrew Church about whether the piece of... I sent some pictures to Sarah at New Buildings. Um, so at the end of New Buildings, there is just a patch of near where the, the uh, railings are it's just been left to just be overgrown. I don't know whether that is um, staff and orange responsibility, whether it's highways, there's three separate patches. They're just really quite unkempt and not very nice. So even if we can just get the lensmen to tidy them up in the meantime and do a bit of investigation to see to whom they belong and to whom they... There is yeah, there are a few things I need to do, like red searches on the last one, but it's, it's certainly if everyone's happy in the meantime. That if it is somebody yes. else's land, obviously we want them to take responsibility. But I think you know, as we're getting towards the end of the growing season, I think it would be appropriate to do it now. Yeah, and pursue that. Yes, I, I think on that end as well. Also, just to have a look at the runoff from where the um, it all soaps is. We we on the case. Right, thank you. Any further ones? Uh, Councillor Carl Kosicki. Yeah, um, can you possibly look at doing uh, the lensman streaming they might have white? That's very overgrown and it needs weeding to the curb edge as well. Yeah. Councillor Yates? Yes, um, really fitting in with item 34 as well. There's a style which is completely broken and, and collapsed uh, below Well Lane leading to what's called locally the, the Roman Road. There's a field which goes across, then there's a footbridge, and then there's a, there's a style which leads onto an old farmer stroke miners track, which takes you around the back of, uh, uh, is it Proctor's Nursery? Uh, and it's completely enough to collapse. Um, it's it's beyond where a farmer would farm, so to speak, and it, it is like a, a bridle path, which in a convoluted way does lead up to uh, Congleton Edge. You mean Pointons, don't we? Pointons, Pointons, not Pointons. Pointons. It's down that area. It's between Pointons Nursery. And could you actually indicate that uh, in a sort of I can, plan to the chief office? I can send you a what three words. Yeah. Right. Okay. What, 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 sorry. What, it's a sour, which is completely collapsed. It's rotten at the bottom. Is it on the definitive map? Uh, it will be on the definitive map. Very close to where we crossed the other week, if you know it, over the footage. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's gone completely, hasn't it? Fully collapsed. Yes. Yeah. So, thank you. Any further su uh, suggestions for Linksman, please? Councillor Jones. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, if I may, uh, on the green at Middle Moor, there is uh, what we refer to as the community stone. It's a triangle piece of stone about PAI, which I was instrumental in installing a long time ago now. Um, and somebody, in their wisdom, a few years ago, planted a flowery cherry tree right next to it against my wishes, but anyway, I didn't know with it. Uh, it's now sort of swamping the stone, and one or two people have said, could maybe the crown have actually raised a little bit? Um, it would be a very quick job. 
Uh, I had thought about doing it myself, but bearing in mind the way I exercise, ask the Yates for doing jobs himself. I thought I would not do it myself and ask if a landsman could do it, please. <laughs> well, yes. Yes. Well, 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 Washington that. Springs to mind. <laughs> Drop down a cherry to you. Yes. The branch is running about that thick. I'm not saying chop it down. Although, you know, uh, it's it's the crown. The crown, the crown raising a little bit. Yeah. Done. And could it be done before the 5th of November, please? Why are you going to use it on the bonfire? Well, we're going to put a copy cascade on the stone and they'll be doing that on the 5th of November. So this, this is why it's come to the fore in the last couple of weeks. Alpha Kasiki, you wish to come yeah. back again. So I don't know whether this is something the, the lensman could do, but the hedge that divides Falls Road from Mao Lane it's been overgrown for years, so I don't know whether it's the county council oh, that county. Could do it, or whether it be the town council uh, that could do it. So I remember the last time the county got involved in that, and uh, it was the Texas. It was the uh, Falls Road Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, they closed the road and they cut down a lot of trees and things like that. So. Uh, and uh, a lot of bad events have happened with the county council and men with chainsaws in, in Biddulph in the past. That's how we lost a, a tree in the car park, I seem to remember, many years ago. Before your time, yes. I was born. Promised to be put back. Right? I was promised to be put back. Uh, the county council never, never, never went back. If I may, I think I'll ask the county to do that. They usually do that. It's a really difficult job. It is. Isn't it? <clears throat> Dangerous junction. Do British farmers seem to manage to cut their hedges all along the main roads without any problems? So I don't see why it should be so difficult for the council to have some to it. The chief officer will ask. Yeah. Councillor Kasiki. I'm going to move on now. And we're going to move on to confidential items. Um, now, um, thank you very much, YouTube. Uh, thank you for watching, but we will be moving into confidential now, so we'll be um, disengaging from you, and thank you very much for your attention.